What's very interesting about the NHS is it can be thought of as possibly one of the UK's biggest corporations with a 120 odd billion pound turnover. And when you have a big corporation, there aren't many that you can say are genuinely incredible deliverers of innovation. The NHS is failing to achieve the rollout of innovations because they haven't got any standard products. They haven't got standard processes, they haven't got standard training, they have nothing that's standard across the organisation. Inevitably, in a safety critical industry like healthcare or other industries like aviation, technologies aren't adopted quite as quickly as they are in a consumer setting. So for example, at the moment we're seeing the NHS making a lot of overt efforts to adopt technologies based around data. However, we're also seeing in certain areas technologies such as virtual reality actually being adopted very quickly in a clinical setting. So there are areas where there isn't quite as much of a lag between what is innovative on the high street and what is considered innovative for solving healthcare problems. The NHS really has difficulty evaluating innovation and so pretty much every organisation asks for a trial. The difficulty uh, that they have all the time is how the innovations have been evaluated. So there's lots of issues that generally aren't answered and that's a, that's a real barrier. The health economics of how people make decisions differs. You can have two people in neighbouring areas who are looking at exactly the same problem but have different financial restrictions, different reporting mechanisms, different processes for getting things approved, different budgets uh, and different structures with which they work. So the product needs to be customised potentially up to 207 odd times if you're dealing with the commissioning groups, 150 odd times if you're dealing with different trusts, if you're going into the community in other 40 or 50 different organisations and every single one will differ significantly. When people try to go into the NHS with their purpose-built product that they've designed, it's often going in with a Rolls-Royce when all the NHS can afford is a lawnmower. And we need to start thinking a bit differently about this. People who come from an engineering background especially, or from a clinical background, design what clinically fits or what looks great from a practical engineering perspective, but it may be unimplementable and it isn't necessarily meeting a need that is articulated by the service buyer. When you're preparing a device through product development for adoption, there are three very key areas that you need to consider. The first of which is the technical performance, the safety of the device. So there's a certain type of evidence that you'll need to produce based on testing, which shows that your device is safe. The second very key area is the health economic data and the health economic argument. There is a very specific set of evidence that you need to produce to show not only is your device cost effective, but also that you've provided data which shows that it meets a recognized healthcare need. And then the third area is the clinical evidence itself. So while you may be able to show that the device is safe on a relatively limited amount of data, it is up to you to produce a much larger pool of clinical evidence, for example, clinical trials, to show to both clinicians and also to patients that your device can perform reliably on the large pool of patients for which its use is intended. The best way companies can uh, get in is to find a clinical champion. Finding a clinical champion helps them understand the environment that the clinician works in and really understand more about the problem that they're trying to solve. Where we've had clinicians that want to innovate, they need to find a technical company to work with and collaborate. And it's the collaborations really that are strongest and which see most success. The best pathway to success is challenge-led innovation, where it's the NHS organisations that tell you what the problems are that they need you to work on and then for the technology companies to apply either products that they've got already and adapt them or to develop new, new products or services. You need to have the right drivers in place and you need to get people to love you and your product. So if you go and you co-design something with the right staff and all the right people, even after that you have to be aware that you can't imply to existing services that they're terrible. Eventually they may well replace them, but they need to start by working alongside them. You have to get in the system and you have to play the game properly, which means befriending everybody, showing the benefit, getting them to buy into the benefit and seeing that it's not really a threat but a complement to what they do. I think there's some pretty good signposting from within the NHS itself. There are a number of initiatives. For example, there's a programme called the National Innovation Accelerator where the NHS have set out a five-year programme of key challenges that they would like industry to solve, defining quite a lot of the procurement requirements around those particular needs. There are also good resources, for example, the regional academic health science networks, which can also bring technology providers into close contact with the NHS and get a more detailed understanding of regional and national healthcare needs. Through those kind of resources, it's much more straightforward for innovators, if you will, to identify the real needs behind the NHS and go straight to answering those identified needs.